Dr. Nika Daloma and this is another lecture on pathologic obstetrics, specifically on intrapartal complications. So at this time, we will be discussing about umbilical cord prolapse. Okay, so umbilical cord prolapse. So by definition, this is defined as the descent of the umbilical cord into the vagina ahead of fetal presenting part, which causes compression of the cord. So, sa Tagalog, instead na mauna yung ulo na lumabas, naunang lumalabas yung umbilical cord. So, as we can see in this picture, the head is the presenting part. The head of the baby is the presenting part. But if you notice, the umbilical cord already has descended into the portion of the vagina. So, this is the vaginal introitus or opening. This is the vaginal portion and we have the cervix at this area. So we can see class that in this picture, it shows to us the prolapse of the umbilical cord. So what happens is the head of the baby, which is the presenting part, will now press on the umbilical cord. So if there is a compression of the umbilical cord, this will be very detrimental to the health of the baby because it means we are cutting off the blood supply of the baby. We are cutting off the oxygen supply and the supply of nutrients to the baby. And remember, while the baby is inside the uterus, it is highly dependent on the nutrients that comes from the mother. So do we consider this as an emergency situation? The answer is yes. So class, when you do an internal examination, pag inayin mo ang mother, mararamdaman o makakapa mo, bakit meron kang mga mafe-feel na soft tissue na irregularly shaped? So, which is not the presenting part, hindi naman yung paa, hindi kamay, it's not the head or the buttocks. So, it, it will feel very differently kasi soft and irregular in shape siya. So, it is considered class as an emergency situation. And when we say emergency situation, we have to deliver the baby immediately to attempt to save the fetus. So what are the causes of an umbilical cord prolapse? First, we have prematurity. So, when we say premature, Ano ang na-imagine natin na size ng baby? Is the baby large or small? Of course, we will think of the baby being too small. So, maliit pa siya. So, pag maliit pa siya class, ang tendency natin is the presenting part, if it is the head, floating pa yan. Hindi pa yan naka-engage dito sa portion ng lower portion of the uterus. So, what happens, if it, the baby is premature, mauna, may possibility that the cord will prolapse. Okay? Next is... Uh, rupture of membrane with an engaged presenting part. Pumutok na yung panubigan but the head is not yet engaged. Pag sinabi natin hindi pa engaged, ma maaaring nandito pa yung head ng baby. So sinasabi natin yan na floating kasi ang layo pa niya. So there is a lot of space for the umbilical cord to prolapse. Eh kung pumutok na ang panubigan mo, there will no longer be a, like a cushioning effect kasi pumutok na siya. So, yung pressure from the baby, pwede na niyang i-compress yung umbilical cord. Another is shoulder or foot limb breach presentation. So, if the shoulder of the baby is the presenting part, merong space in between that where the cord can prolapse. As well as if it is foot limb breach, meron din space dyan na pwedeng area in which the umbilical cord may prolapse. So, if that will happen, we have a shoulder or foot limb breach presentation, it may cause a miracle cord prolapse. Now, ano ba yung mga nakikita natin na findings if this occurs in a pregnant woman? What are the different findings? So first, we have what we call fetal bradycardia with deceleration during contraction. Pag nakita nyo class, ang cardia, it means heart. So that is the heart rate. When you see the prefix brady, it means slow. Okay, what's the normal heart rate of a baby? 
But sa normal heart rate, kapag adult tayo, 60 to 100 beats per minute adult yan. Pero for a fetus class, the normal, normal heart rate is 120 to 160 beats per minute. For example, pinakinggan mo yung fetal heart tone ni baby at ang narinig mo lang ay 70 beats per minute. Matatakot ka niya ba? Yes, you already call that fetal bradycardia. Pag nasa OB, OB ward kayo class or nasa delivery room at pag sinabi ng doktor or ng isang OB guy ni na brady, 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 paulit-ulit nilang sasabihin ang brady, nagpapanik na sila kasi ibig sabihin na baby is already being compromised. Pwede bang mat- mamatay ang baby if we do not deliver the baby immediately? Yes. Ano ibig sabihin ng deceleration? When we talk about deceleration, pagbagal, it's the same thing. Kapag nagko-contract ang matres ni nanay, may contraction, ang nangyayari sa heart rate ni baby, bumababa or bumabagal. We call that deceleration. So if ito nakita natin sa my mother at alam natin pagka-IE, meron tayong umbilical cord collapse, what we are going to think about is we have to prepare for immediate delivery. At pwede ba natin itong i-deliver ng NSD class? Of course not. Kasi pag deliver mo ng NSD, it will further compress the cord. So how are we going to deliver this cesarean section? Now, the umbilical cord seen or felt during a vaginal examination. Pag, Pagka-IE mo, naramdaman mo na there is a soft and irregular mass inside the vagina and it does not feel like the foot or the buttocks or the head of the baby. So, or pagkatingin mo, nakalabas na siya sa vagina yung cord, that is already an emergency situation. So, what are you going to do? What is the management? Yan, ang kailangan natin matutunan. Pag na-assess natin that there is an umbilical cord prolapse, as a doctor, as a nurse, or as a midwife, ang tanong mo sa sarili mo, what will I do? Ano kailangan kong gawin to help save the baby and the mother? Okay, so number one class, the examiner's finger will remain in the vagina to decrease compression by pushing back the presenting part. Tandaan ka sa, what do we push, push back? It's the presenting part. So look at the picture here. Makikita natin yung kamay, ni mag, uh, kamay ng nurse or ng midwife. Inayin niya, nakita niya ngayon na meron tayong umbilical cord prolapse. So instead na tinanggal, halimbawa nasa emergency room, pagka-IE ko, na, na naramdaman ko umbilical cord prolapse, tatanggalin ko pa ba ang kamay ko doon? The answer is no. What I will do is, if this is the head of the baby, if it is the presenting part, ipupush ko tong head ni baby para itong head ni baby does not compress the umbilical cord. Thereby, we are giving the chance, uh, we are giving the baby a chance to survive. So from ER, kapag itatakbo na rin ang pasyente sa delivery room, nakapasok lang yung kamay mo doon, ipepress mo yung presenting part, not the umbilical cord itself. Same thing with this letter B. Buttocks ang presenting part, so ipupush mo yung buttocks pataas para hindi niya nakocompress yung umbilical cord. Okay, another strategy or management is the knee chest position. So as we can see here, we have the knee and the chest. Knee chest position. So kapag tinaas mo yung portion na ito class, what will happen is gravity will pull the baby on the other side, therefore decreasing compression on the umbilical cord. So hindi na niya siya maiipit. Okay? Another is side-lying with the hips elevated. So we can see here the mother is side-lying, para rin siyang knee chest position, but uh, the hips now are elevated on the side. So therefore, the weight of the baby again will cause, the gravity will cause the weight of the baby to be on the other side there for relieving the compression. Now, aside from that class, ano pa ang management natin? Next is we give the mother oxygen at 8 to 10 liters per minute. Why? Because if we give the mother the oxy- oxygen, it will also give oxygen to the baby. So para masave natin ang baby. Now, sabi niya class, vaginal birth may be done if, only if, the cervix is fully dilated and with adequate pelvic measurements. Eh, bukang buka na. Open na open na yung cervix. That's the only time that you can deliver vaginally. Pero if not class, our delivery of choice is the cesarean section. So remember, umbilical cord prolapse is an emergency situation.
Okay, I hope naintindihan natin. What do you need to do when there is an umbilical cord prolapse? Kailangan natin yan tatandaan. Okay. Now, another condition that we're going to discuss in this very short lecture is prolonged pregnancy. So, prolonged. From the word prolonged, ibig sabihin ang haba na. Uh, Nag-exceed na siya sa dapat na time na nandun siya sa loob ng matres ni mother. So, we call this post-dated pregnancy that extends beyond 42 weeks age of gestation. So, tanda niyo class ha, hindi 40 weeks, it's 42 weeks age of gestation. And what is the cause for this? The cause is unknown, but there are suggested causes that estrogen deficiency may lead to prolonged pregnancy. So aside from this class, ano, this is my experiences ko sa hospital about prolonged pregnancies. Um, napapansin ko ito when the mother had uh, halimbawa preterm labor at nabigyan siya ng mga maraming gamot to uh, na to colicis to prevent contractions. Minsan, tumatagal talaga yung delivery nila. But the exact cause is unknown. Uh, it may be affected by estrogen deficiency. So, what, what can we see in a postterm pregnancy class? Sometimes we see an excessively large infant with resultant birth trauma. Siyempre, 42 weeks na siya, lumaki na siya sa loob ng sobra. So, we see an oversized fetus, macrosomic. Although hindi naman diabetic yung mother niya, pero resultant because 42 weeks na siya nasa loob, lumaki na siya doon. You have an oversized fetus which may lead to trauma upon birth, especially if pinilit mo na mag-labor si mother via normal spontaneous delivery. Sometimes, uh, uh, even if it's prolonged pregnancy, we, we have patients or fetuses or infants rather who are small for gestational age. They are deprived of hydration and nutrition because of placental aging. Remember class, meron din age ang placenta natin. And if umabot ng 42 weeks, nagkakaroon din tayo ng placental aging. And if there is placental aging, ibig sabihin, you may also lack the lack nutrients. It may also lack nutrients already to give to the baby. Kaya ang nagiging ending, small for gestational age siya. So dysfunction, and decrease in amniotic fluid. So those are the things that we need to take note about prolonged pregnancy. So what are the findings that we can see in a mother with post-dated pregnancy or pregnancy more than 42 weeks? So we have, uh, pwedeng mag-manifest sila ng weight loss and then decrease uterine size. Another is, I've mentioned this earlier, masyadong malaki ang baby nila, excessively large fetus. And then we have meconium stained fluid. Ano na nga ba ang meconium? This is a greenish to blackish stool. Ito yung first na stool ng mga infant natin pagkalabas nila. So since ang tagal-tagal na niya sa loob ng matres ni mother, nag-release na siya ng meconium, kaya yung amniotic fluid is already meconium stained. Another is we can uh, assess non-reassuring fetal heart rate patterns. Ibig sabihin yung tibok ng puso ni baby, Sometimes, hindi na maganda yung pattern niya. So, di ba dapat nasa normal, 120 to 160 bits per minute. Minute, minsan bumababa na siya or minsan bumibilis. So, non-reassuring. So, what is our management? Siyempre, 42 weeks na yung mother dyan. So, we have to induce the labor already. So, um, when we induce the labor, pag sinabi mo kasi induction of labor class, Ibig sabihin, hindi pa nag-start na mag ang mother pero magbibigay ka ng gamot para ma-induce, para mag-start yung labor. Yun ang induction of labor. And while we do that, we have to make sure that we monitor the baby. And we have to not, as obigaini, as midwife, or as a nurse, we have to notify the, the pediatrician for potential birth injury. Okay? So that's it for the two topics in this short video lecture. We have... Um, umbilical cord prolapse and prolonged pregnancy. So in the next lecture, we will be discussing on dystocia or dif uh, difficult labor. Okay? So see you in the next video lecture. <laughs>